Hi fellow YouTubers and welcome back to Ivan Hikes the World. Today I'm taking you from Pinawa Dam Provincial Park all the way to the town of Pinawa. I'm going to show you how to get there. I'm going to show you plenty of amazing footage of scenery and wildlife, etc. And I'm also going to finish off this trail with some footage of their famous 54 meter long uh, suspension bridge which covers the Pinawa Channel. So stick around, it's going to be awesome. So I'm going to assume that the majority of people are going to be leaving from the provincial capital city, Winnipeg. Um, so that's where I'm going to base my directions from. Now, from the city, it's pretty much you're going east with a little bit of north to it. It really isn't that far. It makes a wonderful day trip getting out to the trail. Now, we're talking about 120 kilometers, give or take, and give yourself about an hour and a half, depending on traffic and, and where you're actually situated in the city to get there. Um, the drive itself is super pleasant. You're passing uh towns like Beausager, there's plenty of gas stations along the way and of course it takes you um, close to the town of Pinawa and um, you're not quite getting there, your turn off comes just before. And what's super cool is that there's plenty of signage along the highway telling you exactly where your junction is. Now once you get to the park, there's not a lot of depth to it. So like from the entrance to the parking area is literally like a five minute walk. If you drive, you're there in 30 seconds, you're parking. And then the signage is obvious to, to the trailhead. You can't really miss it. Okay, so we're coming up to a marker. Um, I filmed the beginning of the trail and uh, now you can see everything's marked out here, albeit this is a little bit crooked, but uh, yeah, just kind of like Birds Hill Provincial Park here in Manitoba. Um, pretty difficult to get lost. Everything in these provincial parks is really well marked. Now the trail itself encompasses a lot of really, really nice things. You're going to go through everything from grasslands to woodlands to um, parts where it's just rock like a Canadian Shield. And, um, and of course, uh, what complements that is that you're going through these tidbits of the Pinawa Channel and a lot of different waterways. Everything from little babbling brooks to like really wide lake areas. So the trail is just gorgeous this time of year, as you can see. I'm going through this kind of alleyway of poplars that are rustling above with their yellow leaves, a couple reds here and there. Uh, I think it's really important to point out that you can start this trail on either end. You can start in the provincial park like I did, or you can actually start it at the Pinawa Cemetery, or rather just north of it, by where the suspension bridge is. Um, now, I didn't choose to do the cemetery trailhead just because I thought it would be more interesting starting up north at the dam, um, because it kind of gave me something to work towards, right? I knew that the suspension bridge was 11 kilometers down the trail and I really wanted to see that. So it gave me, not that I needed the motivation, but it was just kind of like, you know, uh, a little cherry on top, let's, let's put it that way. And just surrounded by nature, like there's zero civilization out here and it's nice.
So measuring the exact distance of the trail was actually a little bit difficult. I'm not really sure. It's somewhere between like nine kilometers and maybe 12 kilometers. And it really depends how much extra running around you do because there's things to see. There's big like boulders you can climb, you can go down to the water and you spend time kind of walking around these things and exploring. So you do add on uh, some distance over time as opposed to if you just were, like kept disciplined and, and stayed on the trail the entire time, which probably you're not gonna do. So that being said, you can expect a total of about 20, 21 kilometers like I did by the time that you get back to where you parked. Um, now let's talk about the, the actual trail and kind of the sequence of things that you see. Um, one of the things that I can say that really stands out is that the province has done a fantastic job in posting like little information tidbits along the way. You see all of these signages about you know wildlife you can be looking for, or the, the, the role that it plays in the ecosystem, um, other like important facts and stuff along the way as well. All right, just coming up on some signage here. We'll see what that's all about. Huh. But the wildlife here. So another thing for the bestiary here, I mean, this is one of those species that I kind of wish I come across, but at the same time wish I don't come across, um, you know, just because just of the, I don't think I have to explain why. Um, black bears, which are the only bear species that we have in Manitoba, they're not particularly threatening. Um, they, they can give you a bluff charge and you do have to stand your ground, throw stuff, yell, hoot, holler, make yourself look big. Um, but it's not the end of the world. You're not dealing with grizzly bears, which want to play with you like a piece of rawhide. Right, so I saw a lot of these beautiful trees driving in along the highway. And uh, you don't see a lot of them in central Manitoba, um, where I started all my filming. And uh, what, we're, what we have here is a tamarack. Now, in the summertime, they look like they're an evergreen. They've got these needles. Uh, this is a true evergreen right here. So this is some type of spruce. Uh, and um, they're actually going to lose. The tamaracks actually lose their needles. A lot of people confuse them for spruce trees or pine trees that are dying. But uh, no, the tamaracks, they lose their needles in the winter. And then they grow back in the spring. Beautiful. And like the, to the touch, it's super soft. It's not prickly or anything like a pine or a spruce. Now, starting from the Pinoa Dam Provincial Park, the first thing that I started hiking through was like grassland with wetlands um, to my left hand side and kind of like aspen forest to my right. Um, so I was kind of up on a ridge. And as I went through these grasslands and kind of like these lightly forested areas, um, there were often times where I could come down onto the Canadian Shield on these huge cratons that are coming out uh, of, of the Earth's crust. And, um, and you can get right down to the water. And I mean, there's ducks down there. The water's like really clear, cold. Um, I mean, I wouldn't drink it, but um, it's definitely like really, really... Um, just these majestic kind of views so so far the trail is groomed like you can see uh parks manitoba the provincial park uh, authority uh seems to keep this uh mode uh for the purposes of, of hiking and, and what have you uh which is really good the ground even though we've been getting rain um it's uh yeah it seems like it's there's there's good uh drainage there's not a lot of puddles or anything like that it's not mucky i'd say it's like compact clay and soil um and grassy so uh really nice to walk on there's no no issues whatsoever So I've come to this craton here, which basically means massive boulder. 
can see how it's covered in, in lichen. Hmm? Just old, wild, and beautiful little patch of moss growing underneath the juniper there. The river kind of widens out here. Current seems to pick up over here where it kind of bottlenecks for a moment. Now, as you continue, you start to go through some really dense forest. I mean, not the trail itself. The trail is really well groomed, um, but the forest gets older. It gets more mature. There's these huge root systems coming out of the ground. So you got to watch your step. If I didn't have really good like toe protection on my on my boots, I definitely would have stubbed my toe a few times. But um, yeah, like you know, you get the moss and the lichens growing on things, and and everything just looks aged well, you know, and um, you go from like low lighting because the canopy is so dense to like a little bit more uh, open spaces where maybe the, the poplars and the aspens aren't so uh, aren't so old. So this trail is absolutely beautiful this time of year. My God, I've got these tall poplars rustling overhead, as I'm sure you can hear, and uh, they've got these bright yellows, couple couple points of red here and there, and uh, yeah, it really is something. Um, currently in like this little kind of channel, really narrow kind of path. Let's see if I can turn the camera around here for you. And I'm going through kind of on both sides, wall to wall poplars and all these crunchy leaves underneath my feet. Um, just adding to the, the ambience of the, of the area here. Really nice trail. in there there's a prairie chicken or a grouse. I'm not sure. Right there. One of my most memorable places, which just took my breath away, and I had to come back to it on my way back too, because it was it was just, it takes your breath away, there's no words. You kind of come down, there's this part in the trail where you, you kind of come down, and it opens up and all of a sudden you realize that like, you've got this wonderful, beautiful lake with wetlands and fall colors and everything to your right. And there's this little peninsula that kind of jets out and you can hear water rushing, but you can't see it right away. Now, when you take a few steps out onto that peninsula, you can start to see rapids developing. So all of that water that's up here, um, you know, in that lake area is actually being bottlenecked through this little this little space towards the end of the peninsula and it's creating like these these beautiful whitewater rapids and they flow down towards you know the direction that you were coming from. Um, yeah, just you got a 360 view from rapids to beautiful lake and, and the woodlands that are, are surrounding you and you know you can see ducks in the in the distance, maybe geese going overhead honking. It, it's yeah, it's breathtaking. So coming across this part of the trail section is absolutely breathtaking. I've got rapids on one side, right? As it kind of, there's a bottleneck here and then it goes to lower elevation and that's what's behind me. Absolutely beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. This part of the Trans Canada Trail. Continuing down the trail further is um, you start to go back through more and more woods. Um, you come across a few like breaks and openings where you can access, you know, like um, photogenic spots for the wetlands and, and for that lake area. Um, and then for the most part, there's there's some cool little bridges that they've built to, to get you across creeks and whatever. I came across a few beaver dams and some really like swampy areas. And, uh, and yeah, for the most part, the trail gets wider because it looks like maybe there's sometimes like some ATV action on there. Um, you know, people and their toys coming out. I came across a couple mountain bikers as well. So, I mean, you know, uh, that, that's worth noting. This trail would be absolutely fantastic for that kind of activity. Um, and yeah, as you go, it just kind of like it's mature forest with a really nice wide trail. I mean, you can see open sky above you and uh, it takes you all the way to, to the Pinawa Suspension Bridge. Just another spectacular view. You've got this wetland separating the trail, which is just behind the camera. And all you see is fall colors on the shore, the distant shore, and reeds, wetlands, cattails, uh, ducks taken off, because I guess I've spooked them. Yeah. Can you tell I'm having fun? <laughs> All right, so I came off my trail. There's a parking lot here, and this is the Pinawa Cemetery. And if you Google map that, you'll see that. I probably will put that up on the screen at some point throughout the video. And this is what we come to, is the Pinawa Channel Heritage Walk. All right, so um, as you can see, there's the town of Pinawa, which is down there. We're where the arrow is here. Let me get in close. And uh, we want to go check out this bridge, and then we want to make it back, uh, I guess, along the Alice Chambers Trail. So uh, not too much daylight to burn, so we're going to get going. Uh, I'm not going to take a rest, even though those picnic tables are tempting for a second here, as it's been, uh, I don't know, 12K so far. So no rest. We'll, uh, we'll get her done and uh, start heading back. Now the Pinawa Suspension Bridge, it, it's something to kind of behold. Uh, it crosses this beautiful section of the Pinawa Channel and uh, yeah, going across it, you know, you're swinging, you're swaying. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, just looking at it, it's like, wow, this is, this is pretty impressive. Woohoo! Made it! Bridge! Awesome! Let's go! 
And so basically my experience was after playing around with the suspension bridge for a little while, um, taking the opportunity to do some photos, I, uh, I just started moving back. I, I recharged with some water and uh, some granola bars and uh, back I went. You know, this trail doesn't really pose a lot of obstacles other than the distance. Um, just because of the distance, I would give this um, this trail like, you know, a, a moderate, kind of mid-moderate um, rating, you know. Um, you know, if you're, if you're conditioned to walk that distance, it's a piece of cake and it's, it's a pleasure to walk this trail. Um, that being said, this trail shouldn't put off beginner hikers either because you can turn around at any time. Within those first five kilometers, I can say that you're probably going to take in the majority of the water bodies and um, those really nice scenes. It's kind of like the last half of it where you're really enveloped in forest. So again, if we're making a case for why to start from the Pinoa Dam Provincial Park, that's it. Because in the first half of it, let's say, you know, five to six kilometers, I think is safe. Within that distance, you're gonna take in the most beautiful parts of that trail. Anyway, everyone, thanks so much for joining me for another video. I hope you found this information entertaining, useful, uh, educational, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care. So I found this craton here, and there's this just big rock sticking out uh, from the trail, which is back up there in the woods, and I couldn't resist coming down to the water. Um, I mean, Manitoba, this is like right in your backyard. I drove an hour and a half to get here and I'm the only one out here. Where are you? Right? <laughs> yeah, I firmly believe that if human beings can rekindle their relationship with nature, we can begin to realign our values and live in a way that's more sustainable.